Welcome to how to call your second <laughs> Ubuntu touch up. Uh, I like introductions and as it was in the template, I like to use them so you can see we are all nerds so we understand that the answer is always 42. <laughs> uh, you have little message, little, some methods to contact me. I tend to have my phone like in silence so just feel free to ping me anytime with weird questions <laughs> if you like. So basically all my contact is civil ship. So. Today we will try or I will try to explain to you how to code like the current way of coding clicks for Ubuntu Touch and also maybe swipe off of the quickness we have still and maybe you can help us like ironing some of the problems we have yet. Those are the useful links we have for today that are basically clickable our documentation and Qt documentation. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad joke. Yeah. Uh, well, I know you look, you do things like that. <laughs> uh, that's actually our beloved, our beloved tablet. So it's really like really cool way of. Managing your stuff and it's, I did that only to show a little bit of, <laughs> but I kind of like it. So, yeah. I think you're mainly, uh, you know the, the system quite, quite easily. So. <laughs> I wanted to show one of the, my little kids. How are you? <laughs> Life is hard. So this is one of my little babies. Uh, it actually demonstrates little things we try to we try to do, like you know, it's basically a, a text adventure thing you can interact with. It's all written in QML with some C++ backend, but the thing is. It converges. <laughs> I'm quite proud of that. <laughs> yes. So those are the little things we can obviously do, uh, but maybe we we can do something better on the computer. <laughs> So, praise, praise Silvia Rita, please. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, how many of you tried to create an app for the <laughs> for the touch? <laughs> so <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Like the philosophy is still the same, but what we use now is uh, clickable, as I said before. So we have several methods to um, install clickable. Clickable is based on, on Python, so uh, it runs all the code we need in Python and uses a Docker image with a target architecture to build the thing. 
Actually, you could build the clicks on, on the actual phone or uh, on the tablet. But I will show you that is clickable helps us if we don't actually have a, a, a device. So the only things we need are those. So it's Docker, ADB to connect to the device if we have, so it's not mandatory. Git <laughs> and pip3, which is the um, package manager for Python. And basically, running this command here will get you like clickable install in your system. So you don't you don't have to use Ubuntu. You can you can use any any computer that supports Python, Python three, and you have a Docker. Uh, service install. The only thing, remember, logging out and logging in after installing Docker, otherwise you will run into weird issues. Uh, if you are in, on Ubuntu, uh, you can add this PPA, but you know, not everyone is a fan of it. And also, if you mix those two systems, you're going to get a weird mess on the computer, so just use one of those. And if you use Arc, I don't need to explain to you <laughs> how to how to install this. Uh, so is that big enough? So basically, once we have clickable installed, it's just as easy. As <laughs> asking for uh, its version to check that it's running. And from here, first the step is obviously uh, uh, obviously go to the docs and say, okay. What we need to do, we have little commands, etc., etc. But I will explain to you that is the main point of being here. So, uh, it's pretty easy to use. Like clickable create will create your base app, so we can choose it between different. Types of apps. Uh, if you have to, if you have before tried to do something similar, you will be kind of familiar with those. But uh, the ones we call pure QML is because we just use QML, so we did, we don't have any uh, dependencies or anything. Just QML, and it works on any device. Uh, we tend to use CMake because Brian is a lover of CMake and. Uh, you'll see that is, if you never tried CMake before, it's like perfect. Great documentation, we love it. Uh, the other types of apps are it depending on what you need or what you want to do. So if you need like like the game thing you saw before is using some libraries, some PP libraries. So we use the CMake and C++ plus QML, but people in the community have helped us and added like Rust, Go, and basically anything that connects with QML can be used. <laughs> Today we will not see Rust or Go because just <laughs> I don't. I want to make the jokes, <laughs> um, so we can. Start basically by a pure QML app, um, and the way of doing a basic app is like really following the all the questions. So next, 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 next. That is, uh, well, I have obviously a template that I downloaded before, but it's always nice to get the latest because we are updating the templates that we are updating 
well, we. <laughs> uh, so it's uh, always nice to have the latest version of every template. And basically, it's filling a form. So I would type, our uh, app title would be just app, <laughs> which is, we can get into troubles maybe. Uh, yeah. The title is um, what it shows, like it's used to show on top of the apps, on desktop, etc. Description, it just, you know, this is a app name is used internally for the click and for the system to know what we are doing. So just to uh, ID the app, and that would be like <coughs> important. <laughs> or, yeah, if you are like me, you go like spelling. That we need to fix, <laughs> because actually the app name should be the same, exactly the same. So careful there, followed by you. That helps in the system too. Identify the your app and who did it and which version is uh, using in the system. Version we can just go like. Well, this is mostly alpha. Uh, unexplained. Um, just send me things with your ideas and choose a license and. Ta-da! Yeah, but what we do here? Because, you know, we have our... our <laughs> we have a beautiful app here. Okay, good. That's expected. But, you know, I, I cannot connect my device. I can connect my device, but you will see nothing. So what we do? Just try it on the desktop. That is clickable desktop and see what happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so you see what I did? I uh, tried to run clickable on the pardon folder. That is something I <laughs> normally do. <laughs> so you get up with this build folder. Okay. So, if you actually do it properly, you move into the, <laughs> the correct folder and run clickable desktop. And normally, if you don't have the Docker image for the system, it will download them or update them because the images also get updated. And oh, we're here. So, tell me. Inside Docker container or just built inside the Docker Both. Container. For the desktop, it's um, because uh, people wouldn't, wouldn't have a device. So it's actually, it, it got updated lately and is installed into the image, uh, but uses um, the config file in. Uh, those are the, the config files, that the, the, the um, yeah, configuration folders that got hooked on, on home. So it's installing the Docker image, uncompressed, and it runs through through Docker, but using the config in the in the system. So it, it stays. If you need to test something, we have like you know all the temporary files and so. So it's useful if you're doing tests and you need to change something. Longer answer to a short question. Yeah, <laughs> uh, basically, this app does nothing. <laughs> uh, so 
So basically we have everything here uh, that is the uh, by default the, 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 the structure by default that we use uh, which is uh, a manifest that is using some system variables to be able to build it depending on the architecture. Uh, I like to add some variables for the version so I can use like the variable inside the QML, but that's for the next talk. Uh, so basic readme uh, this is where the magic happens. That is a JSON just for the clickable to know what we would like to do. That is which kind of template we have and what it would have to be to run on the device. So if you have the app running on your device, the first thing it will try to do clickable is scale it. Uh, but this JSON uh, is prepared for like fine tuning the things you want to do with the with the clickable. So you can set up pre-built libraries, post-built libraries, uh, and now we got updated and we got all sort of like dependencies, trees and things that I don't completely understand, <laughs> but they're beautiful to have. So uh, makes life easier so you can, Basically, one of the problems we had with Teleport, the new Telegram app, it was like it takes like one hour and 40 to build all the dependencies and libraries. So it's easy to just pre-build them once and keep working like a, like persons. <laughs> uh, the basic desktop file, that it has a little hack for being able to edit. And you might know why, what we do with this. So everything works under CMake. That's the, <laughs> don't get scared. Uh, you can edit the CMake if you need to do fancy stuff, like I said before, like uh, setting some uh, variables and use them as you like. So it's, uh, you, if you know a little bit of CMAG, it just makes sure that all the information that we gave through the process of making a new app is there and is spread all across the, the project. But it can be modified. Uh, translations got also automatically uh, detected and any code inside any QML code inside that has uh, a translation translatable um, string it gets automatically caught by the CMake so makes life easier. So, <laughs> um, too fast, too slow, are we okay here? So, what about one of the questions that we had the other day was how to uh, connect actually the C++ with, with QML that, uh, well, I've lived through the pain of trying to <laughs> untangle all the documentation that is, is good, is good. We have a lot of documentation, but it's a pain. So, so to make our life easier, may I? Yeah. Thank you. I used to, I, to, I tend to, to, 
to do that. <laughs> so make sure you are in the right place, otherwise <laughs> you're going to run into troubles. Uh, so um, oh, also a little, little um, thing I forgot about the CMake. You don't have to use CMake. You can use QMake. And Clickable will automatically detect that you're using it because it's very clever. But we tend to prefer CMake because it's like, we like it better. So actually, for doing a C++ QML app from the beginning, it's just as easy as before. Like, Some humor there. Um, oh, yeah. One very important thing that we tend to as well. <laughs> Some other important thing that we tend to forget as well is um, case. Case matters. So careful or will you will run into Weird bugs um, while we finish the final touches. But in between the square, square breaks, braces, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, it's actually the, the, the format and the case you should use. So the app name always low case, otherwise it will run into really <laughs> weird uh, troubles you will not be able to debug because you will not find them because it's like, okay? And one thing I found is you cannot start your app name with a number. <laughs> Otherwise, URL dispatcher and the system, well, basically the system that connects uh, URLs and app and Content Hub will get confused. <laughs> so, um, hmm? <laughs> as well. <laughs> so, in the case of the C++ um, projects, we have uh, additional information to give to the to the system, and you see the case. That is in the square braces is important. So the plugin name, it will be the name that you actually use to uh, address the library and, and its functions. So this will be a C++ library. And again, remember to, <laughs> to get into the folder and it builds the C++ library. It will give some errors if you need to change or if you need, if you have my misspelled something. <laughs> and whee, we have a C++ library that if you inspect the code, it's actually, um, Calling this this function here when it when it completes, so it's kind of boring, but it works. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. So it's actually a, a basic QML code that uh, is declared is declaring the main uh, the main view of the app, main page some items inside and some labels and things. And when 
the main view is completed, it runs a speak function in the CPP library. That is the name we gave in clickable when we set it up, which is uh, and a Under here. So, yep, pretty easy. We have not much to do, and we are like really um, error free uh, as a start, at least. So, you have a base, and that works really for. Any of the templates? <laughs> We're not going to go through all of them because it's a bit boring. But what happens if you actually have a device? So uh, you actually run clickable with the device hooked. And it does everything that it needs to do, building the C++ library for the devices catch Architecture, architecture, that is ARM. Packages a click and tries to call the device through ADB. And actually, we don't have any device attached, so it says I cannot find any. But we actually could. <laughs> Hooked up one. Ah, mesquichadas. Obrigado. <laughs> so, let's see what happens when you have actually a Device hooked, it does the same thing. Compiles the library. Hooks everything. Fails the click. Send it to the device. Copies the files into the device. And you have a very beautiful <laughs> <laughs> so basically you need to you know like have your device detected and hooked up that's not very difficult to 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 do you have to have develop mode on on the device authorize your application etc but why why is also um, useful clickable in this case. If you actually have a device and you have a bug that you really don't know what it's doing, you can do clickable blocks and it will tell you, oh, you know, like is <laughs> uh, we're connecting to the mirror is not that client <laughs> and actually is Doing a hello world in the in the lock. Why? Because we asked him to do. When the app is completed, we asked him to make actually that. Like when it's finished, run the speak and the box this string, which is yeah. You know it's it's working. Uh, <laughs> well, you know those. This is just a message because the the device got um, like on how do you say in sleep mode? Yeah. So it will tell you like you are swapping and you cannot accessing the app, but it, that's perfectly normal for now. <laughs> tell me, tell me. Uh, maybe a question, but are 
no stupid questions. All questions are welcome. Okay, no, it's not a stupid question, and even it's very nice to. You remind me, I have to explain it because basically there's two ways of running the apps uh, on any device. That is, we are mainly using since Canonical. Thank you. Uh, we are using QML Syn, that is a prototype. Maker, but also what it helps is to run any QML. But actually, if you if you have uh, like installing your computer, you can try to run a QML, but it has certain limitations. Uh, I'll just show you because it's funny to see, which is oh, we don't have this version in my computer. So actually you could install the proper uh, cute, quick, cute quick versions, the Ubuntu components or any components you're using for your app on your computer and just run the application just QML scene, which is quick for developing or to, <coughs> to demonstrate how it works and, and it's quite quick. Actually some developers use it like that <laughs> which is it's, it's very it's very agile way of doing it but if you want to be sure that your app is like more consistent is quicker and everything is in one file what you do is a C++ binary that what it makes is a main C++ oh yeah actually I can show you it does main uh, C++ that says my main QML, that is the UI specification, is this file. So everything is under one binary, binary, but you have to compile it for every for every architecture, which is yeah, what you're supposed to do in nearly all of the times. Um, So, uh, it, it should ask you. So, yeah, if you can check the version, but absolutely you should. You, uh, I think you. Six point two point one is the latest, so it should should ask you for for everything. You you absolutely want to make sure to use the latest versions, uh, the latest version of 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 clickable. This is the binary type. You have this main C++. And if you um, so when it when it builds a uh, new version of clickable will will maintain the building the builds for different architectures in different folders Whee! so it actually builds a uh, uh, click with an Binary, there. So this is 
this binary that is running the same exact main view with one page and and hello world as a main QML. But it, this is actually it's supposed to be the preferred way of doing the apps because it's like binary for your system and everything is more consistent. And C++ should, should be way faster than uh, yeah. QML, QML is sim plus QML. I can explain to you how I do it, <laughs> which is quite hacky, but it's like, um, actually it's like duplicating the folder. So if you duplicate any folder, just make sure to keep the names consistent in your plugin. And it's basically uh, my own plugin. And you should make sure that you need to change the name of the plugin. Uh, it, it actually it's uh, imported through C++, so it makes a kind of a binary with the code, and and so this is all the information it, it uses. So yeah, grep, grep, takar, and the name, and replace everywhere. Keep the <laughs> Keep the um, case because it's case sensitive, and it will it will let you import in the main QML. We accept PRs, so <laughs> you can just hack it, and and actually it would be really cool to have like. I want so many, so many plugins. Yeah, but actually, anything you build, you actually with clickable, you can run a command inside the Docker image that will build anything you want for the architecture you're targeting, which is, you know, a bit complicated. It's, it's better it depends on on the way you you work, but it's better to have like the plugin and and make clickable take care of everything. Um, I lost my rabbit. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I wanted to tell you about something about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, just uh, you should know this. Uh, if you create a new plugin, you should import it to be able to use it. So that's again. Sorry. Where to find the plugins to import? Yeah. It's done in the CMake. So you have to add the new plugins as well. You have to uh, to add uh, an install. Uh, la, 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 what is this? So you 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 basically installing it inside the building um, folder prior to to build the click. And it's actually yeah. So that adds the directory, and every directory has a CMake list that ah is the the previous that I show you that makes sure that connects the binary to the QML. So basically, it's magic. <laughs> it's, it's all done in the in the in the CMake. That's that's why we use it because it's like really flexible and Brian know his way and it's like Brian, <laughs> please help. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty awesome to work this way because it's like really easy. You you can really read what CMake does and uh, funny commands you can search them and it's well. I I love it. And, and Brian is very responsive on the 
Yeah, don't ping me, don't ping him too much. <laughs> no, he's, he's very helpful and very, and very nice because it's like, you know. Uh, yeah. Oh. I forgot a topic that is really, 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 really nice. So, um, for the Ubuntu touch, you know that we are using, uh, the canonical toolkit that is awesome. And I true believe it. I, I mean, I true mean it. Which is here. So this toolkit is quite well documented in the docs.ubports.com, which is an updated version of the old documentary. Um, you basically have every single element that we use in the toolkit. Every single signal we have there. We have like really very interesting ways of doing things. But basically, if you don't know how to do a button, you just look for it. Well, <laughs> I'm explaining how a dog functions now. <laughs> but basically, uh, it's like how you import it, the properties that has the element, and actually the name of the element. So basically what we do is what things we can just add here. So we have imported the components. So this is this statement. And those are the properties the button supports. We can change. So we can actually do <laughs> Take an example and just reuse the code. And this will not show. It's three times that it's building the plugin. Okay, that's good. Everything still is okay. And, oh! We have a beautiful button. And it's actually in the way that we like it. <laughs> um, there's a way of telling clickable to not build again and again the plugins and it's using dirty that makes life a little bit easier so that goes faster that just rebuilds the app itself it just uh -huh. yeah it doesn't it doesn't rebuild the library is not modified so it but it's also a way of telling the clickable not to not to copy anything again it just, it doesn't, it doesn't delete the build folder. It uses as a temporary. So this folder is deleted and recreated every time you run clickable, even if it's dirty. It just takes the library, precompiled and, and copies it. But there's a way of telling it, okay, I don't want, I don't want it. I just, let me run it as it is. And it's a new way of doing it that I, I don't remember, but it's in the documentation. So it's improving, like, because it takes, <laughs> it takes time. But one of the coolest things we have in the latest uh, version is dark mode. So how my app would look in dark mode. So will it be good to read? Whee! 
<laughs> which is which is really nice. It's really cool way of doing it because we want to go to a system you could basically change the whole system as using ambience and and that pseudo dark themes. Tomorrow I will talk about that. <laughs> so make sure you'll be there. Um, so basically using the um, the Ubuntu components, so the, the Ubuntu toolkit makes our life better. But what happens if we have uh, an application that, you know, is like a general application, it's using Qt Quick, Qt Quick Control 2, or is using Kirigami, or another toolkit. We want to use our own toolkit. Okay, if you use your own toolkit, you have to provide it. So that makes your click bigger. But on the image of the phone, we have included Qt Control 2, uh, Kirigami, and the Ubuntu toolkit. So actually, we have several apps that uses uh, the Kirigami uh, toolkit. So, sorry, I have to show you the screenshot, but uh, this is actually the, uh, an Ubuntu phone running uh, Nextcloud uh, Sync app, which the um, developer had like ported because he has it for Plasma Mobile, Android, and uh, I don't know, it's like really cross-platform. So the idea to include the Kirigami toolkit is because we want make life easier. So if you don't want to look Ubuntu, you can use your code and you know make your life easier. Um, so actually, if you well, again. If you use the components, you can use Ubuntu components. You can mix them. You can mix them. You're going to run into weird <laughs> problems, but that's part of the fun as well. You can use Quit Control 2. And we provide also a pseudo theme for the Qt Control 2. Actually, the teleports, the, the, the new tele, Telegram app, is using. Basically, the quit controls too because they're way faster, they're way impressive, and but it's not a toolkit, so it misses some some of our elements, our elements. So, well, you know, you have to find your way through, but it's possible. I mean, it's possible to import any uh, Qt Control Two application and with minimal work make it work and look like Ubuntu. Uh, but also, as I said, you can mix both. So you can have, um, you, you declare the name so you can, it doesn't clash with the Qt controls too. So you can use some of the elements of the Ubuntu toolkit that are really nice to use and they work pretty cool. They have keyboard support, so remember the, the, the Ubuntu toolkit is really cool. Um, but also, if you, oh yeah, this is actually uh, the Teleport's uh, GitLab. So it's always nice to look and inspect the codes and how people do that. And if you want to see a Kirigami example, we actually have a Kirigami gallery in the in the store, and it's actually using Qt Control Two again, and uh, the Kirigami, which is uh, in the system. So it's, it's, it's there for you to just use anything you need or to adapt your application to, which is. Feel at home with your with your application. Tell me. So one of the um, targetable templates was uh, pure value and price print. Mm -hmm. Is that in a stable 
usable state. Yeah, the template with QML and Python is actually used by a, a really cool app <laughs> with the beautiful colors. So the UI police have been there. <laughs> And if you, if you inspect the, the code, it's actually pulling the information from the FOSDEM, uh, from the FOSDEM. It's yeah, 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 they do it, exactly. The FOSDEM, uh, publish a, an XM file, but actually we pull, we, they pull the MX file with with Python, so we using p other side. It's not the latest version. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think the latest version of p other side is one dot four, and we use one dot three right. for some reason. But I mean, it's it's quite usable. And it, but where does Python come from? Is that on the phone, or is that going to p other p other side is actually uh, as well in the image. Right. So uh, we were providing the pure other site libraries before, but we decided that it's it's working really really well and, and pure other site is, is made for for cute control so it's it's like fast and and low on resources so it's on the image. So actually you just need to import pure other site yeah. and just use it as regular so providing your your Python uh, code. Uh, I think Omar was first, sorry. Which language is written with the Python. See, actually, um, you, when you install it, you, the, the preferred uh, method of installing it is through uh, PIP, which is the package installer manager. But make sure you use Python 3, because Python 2 is obsolete now. Officially? Yeah. Let's say officially. <laughs> Poor guy. So it was it was old. Now it's it's retiring. <laughs> so make sure to use Python three and PIP three. Don't mix versions. Otherwise, you will run into funny <laughs> funny bugs. <laughs> Okay, but okay, but okay. Thanks for that. But on on the phone, we only have on the system. I mean, on the phone, there's there's a there's a full system, and we only provide Python three libraries, apart from the p other side to 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 get the binaries with QML. Okay. Again, I didn't hear you. How to distribute the... Uh, so, uh, sorry, I didn't, I, I didn't hear you. Ah, you, you don't. Uh, the same application is for, for desktop and, and phone. As long as you use Unity 8, <laughs> now what you do is, is you just package it. The, bi the binary way of doing the, the, um, the app. So, uh, do you remember you asked me for, for the difference of, on the um, templates? So the actually QML inside the main C++ is thought to make a binary. So if you push it to the desktop, it's actually using um, X64, but there's a flag to tell uh, Clickable to use any architecture you like as a target. You use a, actually you, you don't have to, I mean, it should be compatible because the desktop file for the click is, is a standard. So you can use just one package for one architecture, 
and that was the whole idea of the <laughs> of the of the click and it's not sacrilegible because the idea is to be able to use one code and use it in any in any place yeah i mean that, that's the final goal so it's we are not there yet but if you're building like like the binaries it will work on on desktop and you will have a a, a click that is a pre-snap, so all the libraries are in, all the QML is in the binary, and you just to provide the code for the library, so you have to code, um, build all the libraries and the code for the target architecture, and it will work. <laughs> uh, to your mind. If you're using the other side, like... I haven't tried that. By side is a, by side is a question from it, from Q. From oh, okay. There's two projects binding uh, Python and QML, and one is um, PyQt. PyQt, PySide. PySide and Py the other side. Okay, just remember that the other side is thought for low memory devices. And the other one, like the official from Qt and, and P side, is thought for desktop or, or like uh, high resources. Um, so because the action, the idea is the same, like binding, excuse me, binding Python, but the other side it does does it in in a way that is low on resources, resources, uh, and it's like having in mind that it's gonna be a like small device, etc. The other's official, but but yeah, you have to provide the library. So any library that you could use and you can build, you can just put it in and it will work eventually. Well, Actually, if you want to run clicks in Raspberry Pi, you have an image you can test that Mario's scripts had, had it running before eating his socks some weeks ago. And uh, it's actually an image for, for, for the Raspberry Pi. So please test. <laughs> more, more questions? So, um, I think we covered nearly all the things we love about Clickable, and now we go with the quirkiness. <laughs> because, you know, when you use a software, you find those little things nobody thought about, and is, is not clickable to blame, but actually what it happens when uh, you keep running clickable for a certain amount of time is it updates the images and suddenly you end up with 25 gigabytes of images <laughs> in your system. And it's like, what? What are we doing with all this? Okay, so uh, after... Uh, so, excuse me, I probably Docker people will <laughs> uh, know this, this command, but you make sure after <laughs> several times of you have a small hard disk to delete all the images, like if you do that, run that command, it's in the closed issues of clickable. <laughs> Search for closed issues, Thibership, and you will find it. Because it's like, um, it will purge all the main Docker images, the children images, and everything that is updated. That can be quite huge. And remember to have a good con connection next time you're gonna try it, because next time you're gonna use clickable, it's gonna download the new versions. But it's like a very good way of cleaning your system and 
Apart from that and logging, remember logging, uh, if you want to publish your beautiful app, you should, you know, like create your account and find this app key. So I've been recorded, I'm not going to show it. Uh, and why you, we need that beautiful app key because Clickable has a very nice way of uh, first time, so you have to create your app in the website, your um, developers area. So you create every information you need. Maybe, you know, with the name uh, of the app that should be app and uh, developer, the title. So you will have a space in the open store. Once you have done that, you can just make it clickable. That clickable runs different commands like building, um, compiling the libraries. Also, it's doing a review, so if, if you have more um, privileges that you should, I will tell you that needs a, a human review. Um, but everything is fine. Just adding your API key, it will send the new version to, to the store. But if you love... Uh, yeah. No, let's let's. If you love GitLab, or you don't care about GitLab, but you can actually make the CI from GitLab to. Build the app for yourself, get a click, and you can add a step for publishing into the, into the store. So we normally do it with tags. So you tag it as a special version with some commits, notes, and you have to worry nothing about it. You just need, you don't even need clickable in your computer. You just push an version to GitLab, GitLab will do all the, all the heavy wave, that is, uh, teleports could use that and instead of one hour and 40, it reduced to 20 minutes maybe, so every time we have a new version of the teleports app, it got build it, we can check it online, try it on the phones and when it's ready, we tag it as a new version and it's being pushed to the open store, which is really remarkable and lovely. We love GitLab. <laughs> Tell me, Rudy. Uh, how did you find the SA tag? It's done in private, so you don't have to publish. The CI lets you do certain parameters and and, and variable, variables that are private. Hmm? No, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not published. So it's, it's not. It's not public. So you you run publicly this command, but in the CI you have options to have private uh, parameters, and that one is the one with your API key, because otherwise everyone would read it. That's also used in the weather app for some keys and some other apps that needs some keys that are private but should be used in the app for connecting to service. And any parameter that you want, like if you need to add malicious code, you could do it in the, in the CI, apparently. So that's why at the end goes a, a review. But it's, it's, it's done by the CI. So it's a way of, of, 
of setting the CI in the GitLab to say use this parameter, this private parameter. Hmm? This is also documented. This is documented. Everything is in the in the docs. In the um, do, 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 do in the sorry. In the um, in the clickable docs. And on the UB port docs there's some um, some uh, So we have several receipts and several ways of doing it. And on on clickable, you have some yep. so it's linked to the document to, to, to the docs. So it's is under if it's not, it's or it's not enough, like clear enough, you just ping us. <laughs> Again, sorry, the the. What what normally. Um, especially Brian does is takes this variable here that is the one that you committed. So it's like the commit tag, but that might have a bug and check it because I mean anything that that is done here is editable in the open store backend. So once you push it. You have all the information in the in the in the back end. And it's you can you can change it. Yep. yep. Actually you can publish always with the same message, but that makes little sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it, it has a bug. So and I cannot remember what, but something is gonna be fixed soon. Our questions? Rudy? Yep, sorry, again, the template is? Oh. I didn't understand it, sorry. In the templates, the clickable templates, if there are already unit tests uh, included, or you just have to write them yourself? Unit tests? Unit tests. Uh, yeah, like, um, uh -oh. like the, like the <laughs> test you, you do before, like to, to, to make sure all the libraries work, or? Yeah, like, um, so you, you, you write a um, code that calculates and you could write a unit test that checks that the answer when you call that function that the answer is for Actually, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Canonical has a system to do several automatic tests that has been like broken for a while and fixed again, I think. So. I think so. I'm, I'm not really sure. I mean, the main ones for the system and like the very critical components of the system has a very special test done by Canonical that uh, still works and and they take like a lot of problems out. But I don't know any, I mean, I don't know how they work, how to use them or if it's possible to just uh, apply to or the code that is. But if 
because what you can do is just pip open an issue in, in clickable, you know. Uh, clickable has been in. Uh, so we have we have the code in in GitLab. I I introduce you to Brian. Hello, Brian. Uh, so you have the code here. So if you need if you need to 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 um, modify the templates, you can do it actually because everything is is written in Python. So you have everything you need here with you know like oh, not the commands, but the. Uh, uh, the templates. So, you know, we have several templates, and if you need to improve any of those, uh, that are in the wild. So please join. It's written in in cookie cutter. It's a way of of editing the text. So, but it's written in Python. So, if you, but you you can act, you can actually um, issue a, a file an, a file an issue for any feature you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, there's several people uh, working also on the on the templates, as Terran says. Uh, so we keep improving the templates. So actually, one of the cool things of the templates, if we have a web app template that is actually actually ask you for for a website, so it's. And that makes a desktop file with an icon and makes a really nice and useful web app. So check all the templates, check the ones that might suit you and please file any bug you find or if you need some help with it, you can ping us because our time here is up. <laughs> time is five minutes. Ah, is it five minutes? Yeah. Really? I thought I. Okay. I would thought I would only had spoken for one hour. So, uh, more questions? We have five minutes for coffee, I think. So, thank you. <laughs>